be seated. Thank you, Darrell and team. A beautiful song. The word Noel means Christmas. It comes from a French phrase meaning good news. And its origin is from a Latin word meaning to be born. So this word Noel is a celebration of Christmas, an announcement of good news. It's the same announcement of good news that the angels made in those shepherd fields of Bethlehem all those years ago when they announced in this city of David, a savior is born who is Christ the Lord. No L. Wouldn't it have been incredible uh, to have been there for that announcement, to have seen it, to have witnessed it. You know, today, when a couple finds out they are pregnant, they are doing a little announcing of their own. We didn't do this with the birth of our girls. It's a relatively uh, new phenomenon. We call it these gender reveal parties. It's elaborate, it's big. They post it all over social media for the world to see. I went down a rabbit hole this week and prepped for this message looking at some of these gender reveal messages uh, that were sent out and I saw a lot of failures and mishaps. In fact, I brought some with me to show you and uh, maybe we can watch these together and have a little laugh together this morning. Watch the screen. Sister? All right, are you Wait, Vivian, what do you think it's going to be? A girl. You think you're going to have a sister? What happens if it's a brother? I cry forever. All right, look in the mirror. Yeah. Amazing. Well, the greatest gender reveal, the greatest announcement in the history of the world wasn't a failure. It wasn't a mishap. Happened 730 years before Jesus would ever be born. The prophet Isaiah appeared into the future and announced that there was a child coming, a son that was given, and he would bring with him hope and joy and light and peace. The scripture says, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, for to us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Over the last few weeks, we've looked at each of the names given to this Christ child. And today, we're going to look at this last name given. It's the title of the message, Prince of Peace. Now, it may sometimes feel, especially in the Christmas season, like we are experiencing anything but peace. Wait till you leave the parking lot here in just a moment. Whether it's traffic and horns blowing, we hear this time of the year as patience runs thin, people are making last minute trips to the grocery store to buy presents. Peace is certainly not characteristic in my home right now with all the kids out of school. It is complete chaos. Can't do anything in peace. I love it, but it ain't peaceful. Don't come to my house if you're looking for peace. I know for some this time of the year highlights the conflict that exists in many relationships as you're having to make decisions about where the kids are gonna spend this weekend or maybe you're headed out of town to see some relatives and extended family and the stress that inevitably comes with it because of the strife that you feel between you and a loved one. Heck, you could be here today sitting on the very row, sitting right next to the family member that brings you the most stress during the holidays. Don't look at them and don't say amen, okay? <laughs> the reality is, in this season that is supposed to be so peaceful in this moment, you may not be experiencing it. You may not be feeling it. 
not with others. And truth be known, you may not even be feeling peace between you and God. It could be a decision or a choice that you've made recently and you know that it didn't honor God and you're racked with guilt. You lay your head on your pillow and you just feel such a guilty conscience. Or it could be, you know, there's two misconceptions about God. One is like he's this benevolent Santa Claus that just gives us what we wish. The other is, you may feel this, like he's this stern judge. And you can never appease him. You can never please him or make him happy. To you, all God cares about are rules and regulations. And so how can you expect to have God, uh, peace with this God that expects so much? It's impossible. Or it could be there's not a sense of peace with God today because you're mad at it. It's the first Christmas without your loved one. And honestly, you're upset with the Lord that he didn't heal that loved one or that he allowed that loved one to get sick. He didn't save that loved one. And it may not be anger that you feel that's preventing peace. It may just be distance because you didn't feel like God was there for you, that he let you down. And there's not a real peace that exists between you and the Lord right now. This is how it was for the people of Isaiah's day. The Assyrian army was bearing down on them and they were experiencing no peace at all. And Isaiah's prophecy to them was it's not, it wasn't very favorable. He, he was telling them that dark days are coming. Israel, the divided kingdom at the time, Israel to the north, Judah to the south, they weren't following God, they weren't listening to God, and so as a result, judgment was coming, and Isaiah prophesied judgment was on the way, and it was. The Assyrian Empire would overtake them, and then several hundred years after that, the Babylonian Empire would overtake them. They knew nothing but oppression. They knew nothing but the heavy hand of occupation by foreign armies at the time of Jesus. It was the Romans that were bearing down on them, ruling over them. We're talking about peace. The people in Jesus' day, they were not feeling peace at all. In fact, it had been over 400 years since they had heard the voice of God from a prophet. There was no sense of shalom. There was no peace, no future, no sense of wholeness between Israel and other nations or them and God. Peace was as elusive to the people of Israel as it is to some who are here today. And yet Isaiah prophesies. And he says, a child is going to be born. A son will be given. And this Christ child will be given the name Prince of Peace. Jesus was coming into the world and he would bring with him peace. I was trying to think this week of the greatest Christmas present I ever received. And it was between two. One, I was probably eight or nine years old and He-Man was, for you 80s kids, he-Man was everything, by the power of Grace Skull, okay? And I, I don't have this still to this day, but I brought a picture with me. This was Grace Skull right here. And I remember Christmas morning waking up, and you think, how could a Christian family, it was awesome to an eight or nine year old kid, all right? <laughs> the power of Grace Skull, and so I had it, all the He-Man characters, okay, I loved Grace Skull. Gosh, brings me joy just thinking about it right now. The second, greatest present I ever got, I still have, I brought with me, as a matter of fact. I'll show you what the second greatest present is, tell you the story behind it. This was the second greatest present I ever received. Now, this is Ricky, okay? And true story, I must have been 10 or 11 years old when I got Ricky. And when I'd seen these advertised on television, I didn't know that, I didn't know that they didn't speak for themselves. <laughs> so when I got it, true story, I, I thought it was broke because it wasn't talking back. 
And then I learned, no, as a ventriloquist, you have to learn to speak for it. And so I went all in, and don't you think for a minute that I'm gonna do this today, all right? <laughs> Not gonna happen, all right? In fact, the last time I did a ventriloquist act in public, I mean a real act in public, by the way, two-time state runner-up, State Fair, Louisiana, me and Ricky, all right? But, thank you. The, the competition, it was pretty low bar, okay? The last time I ever did Ricky publicly, I, a, a, a lady at my home church, I was home for the summer, and a lady at my home church said, Jared, you've got to, for kids' church, you've got to bring Ricky into it. I hadn't done it. And I said, okay, because I didn't, I mean, this lady was like a mom to me. I said, okay, I'll do it. And I'm up there doing Ricky for kids' church, and one of the kids sitting down here said, his lips are moving. And I folded it up, and I've never used it since. And not about to use it now, okay? Now, some of you are gonna get a gift, all right? And you may, like me, remember it 30 years later as the best Christmas gift ever. I'll tell you this, the greatest gift that God ever gave us is in Jesus. And because of Jesus, he brings with him the gift of peace. First of all, he brings peace between us and him. See, sin separates. Sin puts us in opposition from God and we're all sinners. The Bible says, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We are all sinners because we inherit it. A sin nature, we got it on us from our great, great grandparents, Adam and Eve. And if Jesus had not been born, if he hadn't come to earth all those years ago, you and I would still be living separated from God. We would still be living in opposition from God. But in God's plan, according to the scripture, Galatians chapter four, verse four, the Bible says, but when the fullness of time had come at the exact right moment, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law so that me, we might receive adoptions as sons. And how did he redeem us? His birth didn't redeem us. The Bible teaches Jesus grew up. He lived a perfect, sinless life and he went to the cross and shed his blood for me and you and it's his blood. It's the sacrifice of his life that brought us peace with God. The scripture says, Colossians chapter one, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell in, in Jesus, 100% man, 100% God, the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And so when we trust in Jesus by faith, when we believe in Jesus, not just with a mental ascent, but with our heart that he is the son of God and that he came and he was born and he lived a perfect life and he died on a cross for our sins and he was raised alive. When we believe this good news by faith, the Bible tells us at that very moment, we experience peace with God. Romans five, verse one, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. When Jesus arrived on this earth, what we are celebrating today in this moment is that he brought with him peace. Not just a peace that can exist between us and our creator, but peace with others. All of the conflict that we have with other people, Jesus is the answer. There was no greater conflict, no greater division that existed than that which existed between Jews and Gentiles. Jews were monotheistic, they worshiped one God. Gentiles worshiped every God imaginable, in some cases no God at all. The Jews, they were the chosen people of God, his treasured possession. The Gentiles, they were considered unclean, pagans, outsiders. 
And yet Jesus comes and he begins to change people from the inside. He begins to change people's hearts. And as he changes their hearts, he changes the way that they view one another, the way we treat one another. And he takes these two people groups where only hatred and opposition lived and he brings them together and he brings peace and he makes them one. Listen to what the scripture says. Ephesians chapter two, verse 14. For he himself, Jesus, is our peace who has made us both one, Jew and Gentile, and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by embolishing the law of the commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in the place of two, so making peace, and that he might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility, and he came and he preached peace. To you who are far off and peace to those who are near for through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. When Jesus comes to live inside of us, the Prince of Peace brings with him peace. As the scripture says, my peace, Jesus said, I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Peace is a fruit of the spirit. We're encouraged to live our lives as peacemakers. Paul in Romans chapter 12, verse 18 says, if possible, if possible, for as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Jesus in Matthew chapter five, verse nine, the Sermon on the Mount, he says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. We can only live in peace with others, when the peace of Christ is ruling and reigning in our life, if there is conflict between you and someone else, if peace is absent in relationships that exist here today, the question I would ask, is Christ ruling and reigning in your life? One of the great carols of Christmas that we sing, we sang it here today, Joy to the World. It was written in 1719 by one of the most prolific hymn writers to ever live, Isaac Watts. It's become the song of Christmas. And yet this song, when you read it and you read the author's intent, it has more to do with the second advent, the return of Jesus, than it does his first advent, his birth. Listen to the words, and it's based right out of scripture, Psalm chapter 98, and as I read these lyrics, think of them in light, not of his first advent, but his return to come. The the song says, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king, let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth. The Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. See, Jesus came the first time as the Prince of Peace to pave a way for us to have peace with God. But when Jesus returns a second time, this advent that we await for today, he, the Prince of Peace, will rule the world with truth and grace in this conflict that we see amongst the nations, whether it's in the Middle East right now between Israel and Hamas or in Europe between the Ukraine and Russia, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is going to put an end to it all and there will be peace forevermore. The the prophet Isaiah spoke in Isaiah 9, 7 of the increase of his government and of peace. There will be no end and on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. In other words, it is going to happen. The prince of peace will bring with him peace. Would you bow your heads in prayer with me across this room? And as we pray, 
I wanna ask you a question this morning. Have you expressed faith in Jesus so that there is peace between you and God? You can do that right now. You can pray a prayer of faith asking Jesus to forgive you of your sins, to come live in your heart and life, and you can leave here today with peace between you and your creator. And you can just pray, Jesus, save me in this moment. And the greatest gift you could ever receive on this Christmas Eve is the gift of eternal life that Jesus comes by turning from your sin and turning to Jesus by faith. I ask you, does the peace of Christ rule and reign in your heart so that it rules and reigns in your relationships? If there is conflict and strife and relational strain between you and someone you love, would you pray right now and lift that relationship up to the Lord? And ask him to bring peace. I remind you this Christmas Eve, the words of the scriptures, Philippians four, verses six and seven, do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ. When Christ rules and reigns in your heart, he can rule and reign in your relationships. And so Father, This Christmas Eve, we thank you for sending Jesus, the Prince of Peace, who by his death, his burial, his resurrection gives us peace with you. And Lord, because we can have peace with you, we can have peace with others. And Lord, I pray in just a moment as we light candles across this room Lord, I pray that that light would be symbolic of the peace that we're experiencing in our hearts right now and the peace that exists in our relationships because of your goodness and your grace to us. It's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us online. We hope today's experience encouraged and challenged you. At Champion Forest, we are passionate about all kinds of people coming to know God, to grow in their relationship with Him and others, and then to go out and make a difference in the world. We would love the opportunity to talk and pray with you. To connect with us, just go to championforest.org connect. And hey, of course, we can't wait to welcome you on campus, in person, on one of our locations. We'll see you soon.